Um, welcome back. And right, um, now we're going to talk a bit about um, adding uh, frames. We've, we've talked about uh, uh, doing layers and now we're going to do frames. I'm just going to rename this to mountains and I think I might actually change that color because it looks, um, well, a little bit shit. Uh, right, so here's the. I've just opened up the, the color mixer for that particular color that I used for the mountains. Um, I'm going to change that color because uh, um, I want it to be more like a variation on the sky, a darker version of the sky. So in, in the color mixer, you can choose, you know, your, um, your hue and your saturation and your value, which is the brightness. So I'm going to, um, instead of using any of that, I'm going to use the eyedropper to pick the actual sky color. And you see instantly it's changed the mountains to the exact same color as the sky, which is why you can't see them. And I'll make sure the value brightness slider is selected and I'll just drag it down a bit. And there we've got um, some nice subtle mountains. Okay, um, now while I'm here, I'm going to um, I'm going to make the color of the sky a gradient. So um, I, I double click on the, I'll just do that again so you can see it. The default line color, I'll rename that. Come on, double click. Uh, sky grad, I'll call it grad for gradient. And that can be called mountains. Um, there's a lot of colors in the default set, and I usually like to just start with a blank set, but um, I'll just use these for now. Sky grad. I'll double click on this swatch. Double click, double click, and I'm going to choose gradient here. Right, and now here I've got my. You can add swatches for the gradient, um, little chips, they're sometimes called. But uh, I want the gradient to be a radial gradient because I like to um, make it look like the moon is shining somewhere and I'll just leave it at that now here um, normally this is what you've got in the tools menu um, but underneath the sub selection tool uh, is the edit gradient texture and I can choose that and making sure this is unlocked that's why I couldn't do anything uh, click on it I'm just gonna zoom out so you can see um, and these manipulation handles allow you to do stuff with the gradient. I'm moving it around using the center. I'll make it a bit bigger and what I'll do is I'll drop it down, stretch it a bit, make it look a bit more like a, a moon's about to rise, which if you know my work at all, you know I'm kind of fascinated with moonshots and nightscapes. Right, so that out of the way, let's just um, quickly animate um, we're going to make a, an animated layer frame by frame to start with, and I'll call it bird. Um, now, as I said before, wherever you start drawing in the timeline, that's that's where your frame will be. Um, so unlike in Flash, if, if I start drawing uh, on a blank layer, I will get the whole layer. Um, th that drawing will be exposed for the whole layer. So when you start drawing on a frame in in uh, animate 2 you get um, you just get that single frame as you can see there it's in the timeline so I'll just delete that I'm going to start drawing with another variation on the sky but I'll make it a little bit darker and I'll call that color that I just created bird right and now I'll just start drawing uh, this bird flapping now I'm going to draw the bird flapping on a cycle, just in the sp on the spot, like as if he's hovering, um, because I will uh, move him across the screen uh, in the next video. But um, right now, something that's really really good with um, Toon Boom Animate, and you know the first version of Animate and this one, is uh, individual onion skinning. You can onion skin individual layers rather than onion skinning the whole lot. Um, so I'll turn our onion skin here and I'll just start um, uh, animating this bird so his, his wings are coming up now his wings are going to come down I'll just do them bending the other way um, 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 um and 
you can see with the onion skin in um, in Toon Boom software shows the red frames are those previous to your current drawing and the green frames are those coming after. Uh, turn off the onion skin to see how that moves. That looks all right. Dunk, dunk, dunk. So he's flapping away. And what I'm going to do is cycle this now. Um, in fact, I think I'll pull him back. I just use the Z key, or Z if you're an American. Um, Z, the Z key uh, pulls frames back. So I'll just do that again. Um, I can select the blank frames, just press the Z, and it pulls frames back to the beginning. Uh, now, to cycle this, I can select all these frames, and I'm going to right click it and choose Create Cycle. Um, and here I can put in like 10 cycles just to make sure it goes to the end. Actually, yeah, I've got six frames, so 10 will go to the end, but I'll just put in 12 so it makes sure it does go to the end and beyond. And here I've got a bird flapping. I'm pressing Shift Enter to play that back. And if I click up here, the. Um, the side of the loop playback button it'll just continue to play back all right in the next video i'll uh, we'll move him across the sky using uh, a peg layer <laughs>